Right, fuckers, welcome back to the Old Firm Revival here on Football Manager 2017. I think it's episode 36. I think it is. Probably is. Fuck it. We'll go with 36. Season uh, 5. And in the last uh, episode or something, I had a comment. Someone saying they don't like the series anymore. It's gone to shit. Well, you know, that's... I suppose this comes down to a difference of opinion. Uh, I think the main reason is people are not happy that I went from basically playing it as a normal series then just doing two updates uh, a year so basically just doing like a start of season uh, mid uh, you know like start end of season then a, a mid like January kind of report you know what I mean so I've just basically cut the seasons into two videos I'm not really playing games I'm just kind of simming through it and I don't think a lot of people are um, happy with that format and shit like that so uh, let me know down below what you think of that reason I did that was because I wanted to advance a lot of years and I did start this series late I started it in like was it March I think it was either March or maybe April you know we'll go in March it was probably March so I started this in March and the doing it the way I was doing I, I was really enjoying it and I, I did prefer the way I was doing it to be honest before but I just like, actually played through the season and picked you know like maybe a certain game each week whether it was Rangers or Celtic yes I did prefer that but um, if I kept going that way, I mean, would still be on the second season. I wouldn't. I what would I got by the time Football Manager two thousand eighteen comes out? I would have maybe got three or four four seasons probably max. And I wanted to get a lot more than that. I want to get at least like ten, fifteen seasons into this. So um, yeah, that's basically the reason um, why I did that. So uh, let me know down below what you think. In Football Manager 2018, I do plan on bringing this back and playing it the way it was originally played. Now, whether I start Rangers Celtic in the Scottish Premier League or perhaps move them to the English League 2, that is a possibility. So let me know down below what you'd like to see for Football Manager 2018. And for Football Manager, this Football Manager, I'm not going to go back to the original style, but perhaps I could play a couple of games a season if you would rather that. Because I do, I do want to get, you know, like I said, I do want to get like 10, 15 seasons at least into the the series. So, I mean, if you'd at least like me to maybe break each season up into five episodes, then that could be done. But um, all you have to do is let me know down below and wherever I get the most uh, thoughts or the most comments, then uh, we'll go with that whatever idea, you know, is got the most likes and shit like that so anyway today's episode we're in january but actually we're in the beginning of february so you can see league table as usual celtic are leading the top on 51 points four points in front of Partick Thistle. rangers eight points behind they might struggle to actually um close that gap so who knows they've actually done a lot worse they were like down in seventh for like um, the first third of the season but the form has been good recently and they have moved up, so they're now sitting in third. League's over, they're not going to catch Celtic, 14 points behind, definitely not, but uh, 12 points behind, definitely going to catch Celtic, but 8 behind Partick Fist, so perhaps they could uh, narrow that gap and, um, you know, catch them. But you've also got Aberdeen, who won't be giving up, I know they're 10 points behind Partick Fist, but surely they won't be giving up on second place yet. Remember, second does get you into the Champions League now, so in terms of finance and shit like that, it's massive, so... Before, when there was only one team in the Champions League finishing second or third, didn't really mean much. It was more bragging rights, see who was the second best team in Scotland. But now it's a, it's a totally different ball game. So, you know, finishing second and finishing third, it's like life and death. So, yeah, we'll check how the teams got on in the uh, Europe. So, like once again, we have five teams in the Champions League. And we will check on how Celtic got on, if I can navigate to the Champions League. Can't even fucking remember how you do it. Here we go. Here we go. Group stage. And then you see Celtic drawn in a group with Tottenham and our fellow out. And they managed to come forward. I think, I think that's a good achievement. If you'd have offered me third at the start, I'd have probably took it. I mean, Tottenham and, or, and fellow out, all superior teams. So, you know, I think to finish third and to remain in Europe, albeit dropping out of the Champions League into Europa League, I still think that was a pretty good uh, achievement. So, looks like Celtic will be playing Europa League football for the remainder of this uh, 21 season. That's what's left of it. So, hopefully they can do well in that. We've got the Europa League 
think we had many teams. I think we had two teams qualify for it. I believe it was Aberdeen and Hearts. Could be wrong, but we'll check. So you see Hearts in a group with Napoli, Sparta Prague and some team for Greece, I think. Arno Fosia or some pitch like that. They lost every game, so they must be crap. So Hearts actually finished with 12 points. They beat Spartak Prague twice. I mean, I think that was a very good result. Beat that other team twice. Lost to Napoli. <laughs> Lost to Napoli 7-0 in aggregate, but... You know, Napoli are easily head and shoulders better than everyone else in this uh, group. So, no surprise to see Napoli go ahead there and win 66. But proud to see Hearts get into the next round. And to beat Sparta Prague twice was a great achievement. Unfortunately, Aberdeen, you can see that Group F didn't get through. An unlucky 9 points, same as Crass and Nodar, but they did not go through. Sadly, goal difference was the, the, basically what the difference there. Um, Aberdeen beat Crass and Nodar. They got beat by Crass and Nodar once, but Crass and Nodar with the better result in the head-to-head. -head. As you can see, they beat Aberdeen 3-1. Aberdeen could only manage a 1-0 victory, and that was the difference, really. Espanyol, kind of similar to Napoli. Just uh, destroying the group, getting six wins for six. So look at that, Everton didn't make it through, albeit they did get a tough group, but still a surprise not to see them go through. Chelsea went through. And that is it. So there must have been a few Scottish teams that didn't make it then. We'll have a check. There must have been a few that did not make it. I believe, who were the other teams in it? I think Partick Thistle. Were they one? Um, I see playoffs. Only Aberdeen were in the playoffs, so it wasn't them. Third qualifying round, so they, Aberdeen went through against Kefi Mechelin, however, and I don't see any other Scottish teams. Partick Thistle there, you lost 6 2 and I could get to Sport in Lisbon. Hmm. Difficult tie, probably wouldn't expect them to win that. And that leaves one more, so who's the fifth? We'll find out who they were now. Should be here somewhere. That's no way that's still the third qual second qualifying leg. Did they get knocked out in the first? Holy shit, they must have. What the fuck? Um, here we go. First qualifying leg. Where are we? Did we really get a team knocked out in the first qualifying leg? What the fuck? Wait, they're not there. What the hell? Right, I need to find them. That's gonna, that's gonna piss me off if I can't find. What was the other team? It was definitely, definitely five. So let me see who actually qualified for this. Uh. Season preview. Oh, it's fucking hell. Rangers. How the fuck could I forget about Rangers, man? In they were in the Champions League. Yeah. Right, we'll check how Rangers got. And we'll go to the schedule. So probably easier way to. Oh fuck, that's the Celtic schedule. Fuck. Right, uh, Rangers schedule. Right, let's find it. Right, like I said, look at that. Rangers have picked up form. Lots of green wins there recently. So. The GR's definitely doing better. Champions League uh, qualifying round three, leg one. They drew 1-1 with Anderlecht. And in the second leg, they lost 1-0. So unfortunately, got knocked at the Champions League in the first uh, qual well, the third qualifying round. But obviously, that's where they entered. So knocked out at their first attempt straight into a Europa League playoff against some team called Forskla that you would expect Rangers to see off and make it into the group stage. But unfortunately, they didn't. Drew 1-1. At home and then lost one nil away, so shocking campaign there for Rangers. Probably lucky to still be in a job, Billy Orange. I mean, it's not good at all. Fucking definitely pretty much shite there, right? So what else do we want to check here? We'll have a quick look at the uh, transfers and see who, see if Rangers still like brought anyone in from the last time that we checked them. I don't think they did. So this is the current transfer window in January, and you've got Aberdeen spending some money. They bought Glenn Weir from Sunderland for one point three million. And who is who is he? Check if he's any good. 
he's a 19 year old English man he's been he's got one cap at the under 20 level he's valued at 1.2 million centre back hmm I mean I suppose his stats look pretty decent but, uh, but it's great to see Scottish teams spending money now it's not even just the old firm the likes of Hearts and Aberdeen they are, look at that Aberdeen this season I've spent 5.2 million and they've only sold 375k so they're making a they can afford to make a a big loss I mean which is great I mean at the start of the season this number would more likely be the other way about even though it'd be hard for Aberdeen to make 5 million after players because in Scottish football the players always seem to go down south for absolute peanuts but it's great to see how that's changed Celtic they've brought in Obviously, Sebastian Rhodes, what we showed at the end of the last episode, but that is a, that is a great sign and absolutely unbelievable. I know we lost Griffiths and uh, uh, Dembele and Aitchinson, but I think to bring in those players is pretty much, I mean, it's as good as you could hope for, really. Hearts brought in a couple of players on a free, not really spending, well, they spent a million, like, but nothing major, just average players. I don't think they've improved their team that much, if I'm being honest. They're ninth in the Premiership, and I think that goes to show that. And they've obviously they sold John Suter for two million, who is apparently unhappy at Rangers. So I don't know, maybe maybe could sell him back. Hibs not spent much money either. And this rate, see if she Rangers there. The two million for Suter, then just a bunch of low knees and free signings. So Rangers basically trying to take advantage of the loan system, and that's, that's a lot of players have actually brought in. So I don't know, maybe. They're struggling to gel and that's why they're not doing so well I don't quite know but in terms of the uh, squad shit in terms of the um, where are we in terms of goals who's le what the fuck is this that's not what I wanted right, so in terms of goals this season for Celtic it is Scott Sinclair leading so he's took over he's Banging in the goals that uh, Griffiths and Dembele have left it behind. Then we have Danny Ings, 9 goals and 29 appearances. It's not great, but he's doing okay. we got uh, Ainsley and Mateo Nils there before. Uh, but not many goals for Celtic, is it really? I mean, apart from Sinclair and Danny Ings, I mean, you would expect more. Definitely would expect more. Jason Cummins only played two games. That's, I'd expect him to get more time than that as. That's pretty shocking. He cannot be happy with that amount of gain. Stuart Armstrong's only had one appearance, albeit 11 for the bench. James Forrest only had two. Simifit. Scott Brown's not even played a game yet, neither has Grealish, who's been injured. I think Scott Brown's been injured too. Johnny Hayes hasn't played a game, surprise. And neither has Alvaro Nogredo, so. Don't know if these guys been injured. I don't know, but they've not played many games. Strange. I'll see how Rangers are getting on. And for Rangers, it's Louis Moult leading the way. 11 goals and 29 appearances. Then we have Matthew Knox, who is out on loan. Got 7 goals. Like I said in the last episode, this will be the last season, I think, we send uh, Knox out on loan. I think next season he should be good enough. Maybe not to start for us, but he should be good enough to play a squad player role in the team and I think we'll definitely be holding on to him. Then you got Faghorn with five, Ferreira with five, um Kevin O'Hara who just a bunch of lone players here so they go with that. Jamie Walker only got one goal. You know he's injured but how long has he been injured for? Kinda would expect more for Jamie Walker. Disappointing to see a bunch of these players not picking up more goals. Yeah, Liam Lindsay's only made one appearance. Who's making it so it's well there you go, James Tavernier with the most thirty. Defenders are Danny Wilson, it looks like, and who's the other guy? Hegadze seems to be having the second most appearances. So yeah, I mean John Suter and you can see kinda of see why he's unhappy, he only made six although he has no it's not, it's David Miller with the ten. Ah, uh, so yeah, six appearances. It's not great, is it? He probably wants more game time and I can't really blame him for that. So uh, maybe he'll be moving on, but we've kept them at least until uh, the summer. So we'll see what happens in the summer, and maybe we can get them to 
sign a new contract and stay, give them a bit more game time. A lot of those lone players should be leaving, so that should free up more positions in the squad available for these guys. And then you can see that some of the stats there. So Scott Sinclair basically dominating the um, dominating the what do you want to call it? Dominating the fucking stats. So aye. But anyway, there is the Europa League. Here is the fixtures for the or way behind. <laughs> Anyway, so there is the fixtures for the first uh, knockout round leg. The last 32. Hearts have got Fenerbahce, that will be a tough tie. And Celtic of Man United, that will be another very tough tie. So, fuck, um, it looks like both Scottish teams probably will get knocked out. But, I don't know, hopefully they can surprise us and at least get into the next round. And, I don't know, pull a few surprises and... See what happens, see if we can get the coefficient up even more, which is currently, we'll check just what that's setting up before we go. So we're, we're currently sitting in 8th. We're unlikely to move up. I mean, yeah, we're not going to move up at the end of the seat unless Hearts and Celtic get through, which I doubt it. But I mean, to be sitting in 8th, I, I think when I took over, the, when I started the game, I think that we're down in 27th, so to be up in 8th is tremendous. So hopefully... Yeah, this season, the last two seasons for us haven't been as good as they were in 17 and 18, remember? 17 18 season, Celtic had a great year. They went to like the semi finals, and then the 18 19 season, Aberdeen, I think, went to like the quarters. So, like I said, definitely we're not being as good in the last two years. But to get two teams still in Europe after January, I think, is very good. So, we're doing something right, guys. Anyway, let's go do it. Let me know down below again what you want me to do with the series. And like I said, next season. It will be back to normal, so you know, don't need to get your panties on a twist, like. But I mean, for this season, if you want to see some changes, then let me know because I'm always open to uh, feedback and change. So, until next time, peace.